Most holy and merciful God, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways, and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord. Our anger at our own frustration, and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Genesis. 
Now God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal on the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When, when the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. A reading from Peter. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former days did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, 
but as an appeal to God for a good conscience and through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. <coughs> Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Well, Lent has begun. Ash Wednesday started the season, and we are called into this time of penitence, repentance, reflection, to look at our lives, to do something these 40 days that sets this time apart from the rest of the year. Take something on, give something up, whatever we choose to do. Every year we try to make it a little bit more spiritual, a little, maybe a little bit better, a better Lent. And then when it's over, we rejoice in the resurrection. We arrive at Easter and we celebrate. Lent is over and we have a chance to begin again. We always look to Easter as our new beginning. Things are new, they're fresh. But really the opportunity that God gives us to start over or try things new begins at Lent. Lent can be so much more than a time of penance. This may be hard to believe. When I was in eighth grade, I was on the basketball team. <laughs> I wasn't very good, but I was tall. I didn't play very much either. But one game, the coach put me in, and I was doing really well. I had all this energy and this height and I really looked like I knew exactly what I was doing. 
And I remember at one point I had the ball and I remember looking around and everybody's cheering, the whole, the whole gym. Everybody's cheering and shouting, you know, shoot, shoot. And I did, I shot the ball at the basket. Now it doesn't really matter whether I made the basket. <laughs> <laughs> what really matters is that what everybody was really yelling was, don't shoot, don't shoot. Because <laughs> I was shooting at the wrong basket. <laughs> And yes, I scored two points for the other team. <laughs> and that's an absolute true story. True story. And so you can only imagine in eighth grade how long it took for me to live that down. <laughs> this may not sound like a real story of hope, but, but I promise that it is. It is. Often a mistake like that, something small or maybe something very large, some sort of something that we see as a failure, can sometimes turn into a fear, and it can drive us into the wilderness. I can tell you I really didn't want that ball back again. We want to stay away, alone. We go out into our places of solitude, away from other people, for fear that that might happen again. We don't want that to ever happen again. This is exactly at the point in my sermon where I stopped writing. I was typing on Wednesday and I was going to talk and about the first Sunday at Lent, about a time of fear that that's what happens and we go into the wilderness with this fear, but we go in with God. And as I was writing, it was Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, Valentine's Day, and I had the Olympics on the TV in the background. <laughs> but then a special report broke in, the news about the shooting at the school in Parkland. And then the news quickly turned to pictures, to scenes of the school, kids walking out with their arms raised, police everywhere. You could see parents pulling up, looking for their children. There was lots, lots of scenes outside of the school. And then later on, I don't, it wasn't really a video clip. It was more like a, a two or three second clip on the phone that one of the students had taken to send out for help. And it showed them huddling together, all these students in the corner of a classroom. And you could hear the gunfire in the background. And you could see in that little snapshot the absolute petrifying fear in their faces. So I stopped writing. I was overcome by sadness, but also I was overcome with this incredible feeling of helplessness. Here I was, and I thought, I can't feel like I could do anything. So I began to pray. I prayed for safety for these kids, protection, that God would keep them safe, a quick capture for the shooter wherever he was so that they could get out and get reunited with their families and get out of that building. All sorts of prayers. And then later on, I added something else. I began to pray to God to not allow the fear that I was seeing in those kids' faces, to not allow that fear to become a permanent part of their lives. Fear was so present. There was no hope. I didn't see any hope in any of those pictures, only fear. So every night this week, I've just been praying and praying that these kids will be able to one day see some hope and find the courage that they can walk back into that school. And I don't mean on Monday, I'm talking about in the weeks to come, the months to come, and the years to come, that they can go back in there and praying to God that there will be a day that what happened to them on Wednesday won't be the first thing they think of when they get up in the morning. Then I return to the gospel and I read the story about Jesus in the wilderness, the temptations from Satan. And I think, okay, well, this is Lent. We're in Lent. We go into that wilderness with Jesus. During these 40 days, we are going into that place with Jesus. And if we're truly going to look at this as a season to deepen our relationship with Christ, we have to find hope in the wilderness. If we don't, then fear just takes over. And hope is in the back seat, and in that back seat is God. And I think, do we really want to live where we allow fear to drive us 
and hope in God remain in the background. Fear drives us away, not just from others, but also from God. This past Friday, I was talking to a mother, and she said to me, my son, who's a senior in high school right here in Fort Myers, came home and said to her, I don't understand the point of all this. What's the point? What is the point of me going to school, you going to work, what is the point when this stuff happens? And I thought, what a hard conversation to have with a 17-year-old son. So she said, I just talked to him about God, about how bad things happen, but they don't define who we are and they don't define God's intention for us. When things happen in our world, our country, or right here in the state of Florida, fear is an immediate response and absolutely fear, of course. I can't even imagine being in a situation like that. I can't imagine somebody I know being in a situation like that. I can't even fathom our children or our grandchildren having to hide, hide from a shooter in their classroom. It's something that I, it's hard to imagine. So fear, fear is a response. And the hope that I pray for is that in the midst of all that fear, we can search and somehow find God. We as a community of faith, it's up to us to do that. It is what we are called to do. To see in any sort of terrible scene, to see the face of God. No matter how hard it is, no matter how long we have to search, we have to look around and see the face of God. And if we really look hard, we can find him. You know, in the midst of gunfire, when we hear stories about a teacher that got her whole classroom into a closet and then she stood with them, but she was the one who stood in front of the door, I think that's where God is. Or when we hear about a young girl, a young girl who protected her best friend by standing in front of her, and in turn she lost her life, I think that's that's God, because only God can give somebody that kind of courage. A stranger who reaches out, a complete stranger, who reaches out to protect somebody they don't even know, but does it out of complete instinct to help. I say that's where God is. That's where we find God. Jesus went into the wilderness to fulfill his promise to God, his Father, and he wasn't alone. God was with him. It says in the Gospels, the angels ministered to him. Do we not also believe that God will be with us also in our wilderness? We have to ask ourselves over and over and over again, where is God in our wilderness? Where is God in our times of greatest fear? And if we can't find him, then we just keep looking. We keep searching. We find him until we do, and then when we do, we make his presence known. We are part of a strong community of faithful people. We've got to search out God and acknowledge him. If we don't do that, who else is going to? I said at the beginning that that basketball story was a story of hope. It's a small, tiny story of hope. Nothing huge, but for an eighth grader who just scored two points for the other team, (laughs) there was hope in this story. Because if you can believe it or not, I actually stayed in the game. The coach kept me in. I don't think there were enough players on the bench. (laughs) So he kept me in. And I actually got the ball back, and I actually scored two points for the right team. (laughs) And I think that was the end of a very short, well-lived basketball career. (laughs) So let's enter this wilderness with Jesus. This Lent, in the time of penance when we're looking inward, look for the hope. Look for the face of God. Whatever we choose to give up, whatever we choose to take on, whatever fear we might face, let us find God. 
And then when we find him, share it. Especially now when so many people need to hear that. When they need to hear the witness to the presence of God. Fear will never win if we acknowledge hope. If we acknowledge that presence. And that no matter the outcome, God will always be there. Facing our fears and finding hope is the way to find God. So may this Lent be not just a time of penance, but a time of hope. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. God did not make, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified and Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. pray with me our prayer for both. Gracious God, we ask that you increase our love of you and deepen our faith in you so that we may be your faithful witnesses in this corner of your creation. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, 
and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to you your mercy, all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Dabney, our bishop, Ray, Susie, and for all our retired clergy, and we pray also for St. George's, St. Giles, St. Hilary's, St. James's, St. James House of Prayer. We pray for Donald, our president, Rick, our governor, Randall, our mayor, and the Lake County commissioners. We pray for the ministries at Iona Hope, especially Sunday counters. We offer our thanksgiving for the many blessings of this day, for our guests and those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. We pray, we offer our thanksgiving, excuse me, we pray for Christians, Muslims, and Jews, and all people of faith throughout the world who are suffering persecution for their beliefs. We pray for all who work for peace, especially those who give their lives that it may grow. We pray for all victims of terrorism and violence and for refugees. We pray for the victims of the shooting in Parkland, Florida. We pray for all those impacted by natural disasters. We pray for the repose of the soul of Franklin Susco. We pray for those who are committed to our daily prayers, especially Patrick, Maureen, Andrew, Timothy, Shannon, Cody, Chase, Mindy, David, Andrew, Evie, Rhonda, Rob, Bob, Marianne, Maggie, Sandra, Gretchen, Josie, Richard, D, Edmund, Andrea, Brian, the Flynn family, Julie, Janet, Walt, Ray, Chris, Jason, and Ray. In our congregation, we pray for the Morgan family, the Morley family, the Morrison family, the Moubray family, the Moyers family, and the Molino family. We also pray for our pets, especially Blue, Destiny, Howard, Star, Ranger, Darcy, Bella, Maggie, Boogie. Are there others for whom we should pray <clears throat> and blessings for which we give thanks?
peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you.
fed the multitudes by the lakeside by blessing the gifts of a few people. Bless these gifts to the feeding of the needy, and bless us in your service. For we ask it in your name. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he gave thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread.
Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. So come to this table, you who have much faith, and you who would like to have more. You who have been here often, and you who have not been here for a long time, you who have tried to follow Jesus, and you who have failed. Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here.
thanksgiving for all the gifts we have received. Let us pray together, saying, Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and the heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Bow before the Lord. Grant, Almighty God, that your people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust in your strength, so that they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving providence through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 